so last time uh, we were discussing the schrodinger wave equation for free particle so simply we have seen that the wave function for the free particle is equal to psi of x is equal to a e raised to power iota kx this is the wave function for the free particle and this is known as a time independent wave function for the free particle and we have seen that <clears throat> in the case of schrodinger equation the total energy e when operating on a wave function psi is equal to the kinetic energy t which is operating on the wave function psi plus potential energy u operating on the wave function psi so the total energy is equal to kinetic energy plus potential energy so this is the way to calculate the total energy and we have seen that this is equal to minus h square over 8 pi square in b square psi over dx square plus u of psi is equal to e of psi this is called the schrodinger wave equation and we have seen that okay, the resultant the solution of this for the free particle for free particle if the particle is free potential energy is equal to zero so therefore u is equal to zero so this wave function goes to zero then we have minus h square over 8 pi square a b square psi over dx square is equal to e of psi <coughs> and we have seen that the solution of this is equal to its solution is its solution is is equal to the p square over 2m is into psi is equal to e psi so its resultant is equal to p square over 2m so it means this is the p square over 2m and this is the total energy it means when the energy operator or we may call it as a hamiltonian operator which is the energy operator operates on a wave function psi it gives you the eigen value e of psi <clears throat> this indicates that this h is the hamiltonian and hamiltonian is known as a energy operator and when this energy operator hamiltonian is operating on a wave function and this wave function is called the state function that describe the state of the particle it means when the energy is required it gives you the energy value and we call it as a energy eigen value into the e so now this what we have seen that e psi is equal to p square over 2m into psi of x it means the energy value e is equal to this so this is the total kinetic energy it means the total energy is equal to the kinetic energy because the potential energy is zero for the free particle if the particle is free but if the particle is bound in a certain potential then the potential will be equal to non zero value here potential it has a zero value because it is a free particle so this is known as p square over 2m classically you know that uh, kinetic energy t is equal to half mv square if we multiply with m so this becomes m square v square upon m multiplying and dividing by m so this is equal to m p is the momentum so we call it as a p square over 2 m resultant will be the same p is equal to this 
So the total energy is equal to the kinetic energy, which is equal to P square over 2m. So this is the free particle energy. So here we have completed the solution of the Schrodinger wave equation. So now we are moving towards the barrier tunneling. <coughs> Barrier tunneling. What is the barrier tunneling? <clears throat> Simply, you know that what is the meaning of tunneling? Tunneling means to drill a hole in a uh, in, in a certain thing. If the energy is less than the energy of the barrier, then something is to be tunneled inside it. Or you may uh, call it if you if you tunnel. Uh, from the rocks, we call it as a tunneling. Simply in this quantum mechanics, what is the tunneling effect here? For example, let's say this is the barrier, some sort of barrier. If we roll a dice, the dice is rolling and it will hit the wall. It means this dice will not cross the wall because its energy is less than the height of the barrier. If the energy of the ball or a dice is greater than the height of the barrier, then it can cross the barrier. Otherwise, not. Similarly, question is that if the energy of a particle is less than the barrier potential, then how it can cross the barrier? We know that in the quantum mechanics, if the particle has a wave nature, then it is possible that the low energy particle can tunnel through the barrier even the barrier height is greater than the energy of the particle. For example, let's say here we say that this is the particle whose energy is let's say 5 electron volts and 5 electron volts is its energy. So now if we say that here we have a potential and this potential is a negative potential it means it will repel the electron if we say that this negative potential is the 7 volts if this is the 7 volts then its energy potential energy u will be equal to the 7 electron volts so if we apply a 7 volts to the plate it will provide a 7 electron volts energy to this electron and this energy is known as a repulsive energy because this is the negative electron itself is a negative. So there is a repulsive energy. So now the question is that whether now this particle can cross the barrier, can hit the wall or not. Classically, we say that its energy is 5 electron volts, its energy is 7 electron volts and this is the repulsive energy. So as a result then it will not hit the ball because this energy is less than. If we say that its energy is 8 electron volts then there may be a chance that it will hit the ball. Otherwise not. So now the question is that in the case of quantum mechanics when we say that the particle has a wave nature then there may be a chance, there is a possibility that this electron can cross the barrier of the 7 electron volts whose potential energy is even greater than the kinetic energy. Whose barrier height, whose repulsive energy is greater than the kinetic energy of the particle. It means classically it cannot cross through it. But quantum mechanically when we consider that the particle has a wave nature, then there is a possibility, there is a chance that this electron can cross the barrier. And this phenomena is known as tunneling effect.
and we call it as a barrier tunneling because now the particle is tunneled through this barrier. So now question is that if the energy of the potential is much greater than potential energy is much greater than the kinetic energy then what happens? It means we have to develop a certain empirical relation which indicates the how much is the transmission coefficient. How many of the electrons is transmitted through this barrier? It means you know that when the electron is coming, this is there is not a single electron, there is a so many electron, it is like the electron gun, it is the electron flux, it's a particle flux. When the particle flux is striking on the barrier, all the particles will not cross through the barrier. It means it's a, it acts as a wave, it means it's like a mirror. This is the mirror, this is let's say glass, means the photon strikes on the glass, some of the photons will be reflected back and some will be transmitted. It means some of the photons will transmit through the glass window, some of the photons will return back or we call it as a reflected back. How many is transmitted can be determined through certain relations. On the same way, these are the electrons. If we say that there is a number of electron is 1000 electrons are coming to the barrier, it means some of the electron will transmit through the barrier and some will be reflected back. How many is transmitted, how many is reflected, that can be different, determined through the transmission coefficient. And the term, we have to develop the relation for the measurement of the transmission coefficient, how many electrons are transmitted through it and how many electrons are reflected back. So we have to look at and we have to look at the physics of this barrier tunneling through the wave equation through the state function. So we may say that here, if we say that this is the this is the barrier, let's say. Now electrons are coming into the barrier. The energy of electron is E and this barrier height is equal to U0. It means the U0 potential energy is greater than the kinetic energy of the particles. And the barrier wall, barrier width is from 0 to L. Total length is L. It means when the electron crosses the barrier, within the barrier the electron will feel the potential energy. Similarly, and here in this side, electron has only the kinetic energy. This is the wave of electron. In this side, the electron has only the kinetic energy. But within the barrier, it has both energies, kinetic as well as potential energy. For example, you know that this is the electron which is the free electron. It has a kinetic energy. The total energy is kinetic energy. If the same electron is bound with the orbital, electron is revolving around the nucleus. Now this electron is bound with the nucleus. This electron has a total energy which is equal to the potential energy plus kinetic energy. It means the free electron has only the kinetic energy. The bound electron has both energy. Similarly, when the electron enters into the barrier, it will be under the influence of the potential energy also. So here within this barrier, it has both energies, potential as well as kinetic energies. So we have to look at now. So now here, in this scale, in this portion, the electron has a wave function psi, which is a function of position is equal to psi 1 e raised to power iota kx. Iota shows that the function is imaginary and it is oscillating. 
we say that psi is psi one e raised to the power iota k. This is the state function of the free particle. Psi one is the intensity of the incoming electrons. Psi one is the intensity of the incident electron beam. So I may write it here. Psi one is the intensity of incident beam. Similarly, when it strikes over there, here, some of the electron will cross through the barrier and some of the electron will bounce back. So we say that those electrons which are bounces back, its intensity is psi 2 e raised to power iota kx. And in this case, it is along the minus x axis. This is plus x axis. So when electron hits here, it will bounce back. So the x axis becomes minus x axis. And the function is on again the oscillating. And here, the intensity is psi 2. Because psi 2 is now the intensity of the reflected back. Those electrons which are reflected back whose intensity is psi 2. So psi 2 is the intensity of the reflected electrons here. So now psi 2 intensity of of the reflected beam. Psi 2 is the intensity of the reflected beam. So now the equation of the state, equation of the state here, So now the equation for the state function is equal to in this side to the left, so that to the left of the barrier equation to the left of the barrier. psi, which is a function of h is equal to psi 1 e raised to power iota kx plus psi 2 e raised to power minus iota kx. So this is the wave function of the incident wave and this is the wave function of the reflected wave. So to the, to the left of the barrier, to the left of the barrier, to the left means the x is less than 0 x is, we say it is 0 and it is n. So this portion, we say this portion x is less than 0. Here x is between 0 to n, x is between 0 to n and here x is greater than n. We, we have divided three portions. This whole problem, this whole barrier turning problem is divided into three regions. First region is x is less than 0. x is less than 0. Here we say that it is x is less than 0. x is less than 0 by potential energy is 0. u naught is equal to 0. Because in this region there is no any potential energy. So potential energy is equal to 0. Now in this region here some of the electrons are coming through this and some it will pass through this. So in the region 3, this is region 1, this is one region, this is region 2 and this is region 3. So in region 3, let's say,
region 3 to the right to the right of the barrier we call this equation as equation number 1 to the right of the barrier psi of x is equal to if we look into the right of the barrier, when it crosses the barrier, some of the electrons will transmit it to the barrier and some of the electrons is again reflected. So here, those which are transmitted to the barrier is equal to psi of phi e raised to power iota kx. So this phi, psi of phi, is again the intensity of the transmitted electron. It means which those which are transmitted through the barrier. Here, intensity of this incoming is psi 1. Here, the intensity of reflected is psi 2. Here, those which are transmitted is psi 5. So, the total wave function is psi 5 e raised to power iota kx. It is the intensity of of the psi phi is the intensity of the transmitted electrons your transmitted beam so let's say this is equation number one this is equation number two so now the Next region is within the barrier where the potential is zero. Here, this region is x is greater than l, and here potential is zero. So these two regions are the regions where the potential is zero. That's why first we have discussed the region one and region two. So now we are discussing the region three. So within the region three, the potential energy is now zero here. So now in the region 3, we have to determine the wave function which is equal to the now within the barrier x is between 0 to n the u naught is not equal to 0 potential is not equal to 0 so here in this case the wave function psi is equal to the psi of 3 e raised to power kx k dash x plus psi of 5 e raised to power k dash x this is minus psi 4 sorry it means here psi 3 here psi 3 is the intensity of the radiation which crosses the barrier and psi 4 is the intensity of the beam which reflect back from this barrier it means those which reflected back in this is the minus x and this k dash is the wave vector because now the wavelength is not a lambda. Here the wavelength is the lambda and wave vector is a k. Here wavelength is lambda and wave vector is k. Like within the barrier, its wave vector will change. Here the wave vector will become a k dash. We have to determine the wave vector k dash. So here the k dash wave vector is equal to in this case the k dash wave vector is equal to 2 pi square root of 2m u naught minus e divided by h and within the barrier potential, the equation, Schrodinger equation becomes
within the barrier potential the schrodinger equation becomes minus h square over 8 pi square m d square psi over dx square plus u not of psi into or minus e because e was in this side which can be bring into this side into psi of x is equal to 0 So this is the Schrodinger equation within this barrier. So now, from this equation, we can determine the transmission coefficient. The transmission coefficient is transmission coefficient t is equal to the intensity square of the intensity of the reflected beam to the intensity of the incident beam this psi phi is the intensity of the reflected into transmitted beam and psi 1 is the intensity of the incoming beam so transmitted divided by intensity of the incoming this ratio gives you the transmission coefficient and this transmission coefficient is equal to the this is equal to the six acceleration is equal to the 16 of e divided by u not potential energy 1 minus e over u not e raised to power minus 2 a dash s this is the final relation of the transmission coefficient after calculation so this equation indicates that the transmission coefficient t varies directly with e raised to power l what does it mean here if we look into this equation here if we look into this equation here transmission t is directly power e raised to power minus 2 k dash l this equation minus 2 k dash l it means if we increase the width if we increase the width l will increase so this is minus exponential decrease so the transmission will decrease so this shows that transmission decreases faster with barrier width it means if we increase the width for the thicker barrier the transmission is minimum for the thinner barrier the transmission is maximum this means the transmission is directly propo directly proportional to e raised to power minus l it means if we increase the l the transmission decreases the second transmission t is inversely proportional to the minus a dash and this k dash is equal to the we have seen that this k dash is equal to the 2 pi square root of 2 m u not minus e over h it means this k dash is directly proportional to the mass it means if we increase the mass of the particle the transmission if we increase the mass of the particle k dash will increase if we increase the mass of the particle k dash will increase so k dash will increase as a result of the transmission will decrease because it is e raised to power minus k decreases exponentially so the transmission 
coefficient for the heavier particle is less as compared to the lighter particle it means in the state of electron if the same energy proton is transmitted through the wall of the barrier the transmission of proton is less than the transmission of electron because the mass of proton is much much higher than the mass of electron so this conclusion this concludes that the transmission varies inversely with the age it means the transmission is directly depend upon the mass Yeah.